appreciate that. Well, welcome to week two of our current sermon series called God's Holy Eternity. We started uh, this sermon series last week by looking at the holy eternity that God has prepared for us from before the creation of the world. We looked at those verses last week. God had eternity prepared for us before the creation of the world. That, that's an amazing thing even to think about. And I encouraged you last week, and I want to encourage you again today, to begin adjusting your view of the future to match the holy eternity that God has told us about through the Holy Scriptures. Now, a lot of us get our information about what eternity might be from the Hallmark Channel, from, from TV shows, from books, and from other things, and guess what? A lot of times they don't match what God has told us about heaven in Scripture. And, and we carry a bunch of that, uh, I was going to say garbage, maybe it's not garbage, uh, some of those ideas that, that may or may not match up with what God told us to Think about when it comes to heaven. And so I want to challenge you, begin to adjust to what God did tell us about heaven, because he told us a bunch of stuff about it, and we want, to, we want to think about those things. We want to think about the truth of what he has told us about his holy, his holy eternity, so we want to think about that. When we departed last week, I invited you back this week to hear about the holy heaven that God has prepared for us, so that's going to be our topic today. We're going to talk about heaven, right? It's a lot of people's favorite topic, and so, so we're going to take a few minutes and talk about it today. So I want to begin by asking you the same question I just asked uh, the, the, young in, the, the younger children or the younger of God's children who are here today. I want to ask you the very same question. When you think about heaven, what's the very first thing you think about? When you think about heaven, what's the very first thing you think about? Turn to the person next to you and, and tell them. Or there's a little blank on your sheet if you don't want to talk to them. Write it down. W what's the very first thing you think about? Take, take just a minute to do that. If you think of West Virginia, you're off by just a little bit. <laughs> right? Because that's almost heaven. But it's not. Now, that's where my people are from. And that's okay. But, but if you think of only that, you're limiting yourself, right? Let me just throw that out there. Uh, it's almost heaven. It's not heaven. But the pepperoni rolls are pretty close to heaven down there, right? All right. So let me go over a few of the common responses that we hear when, when we ask people about what's the very first thing that you think about when you think about heaven. Here are some common responses, and you don't have to own up to any of them uh, if you don't want to. Uh, uh, but, but, but listen to these. Some of the, the very first one is, I want to go there, right? When, when people think about heaven, like, hey, I want to go there, right? That is the thought of both believers and unbelievers. Do you know that? They're like, yeah, 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 I want to go there, right? And if that is your desire, then you had better understand how to get in and, and who gets in, right? And we talked about that last week. You might want to reference that if you, didn't, if you don't have the answer to that. Like, what? What do you mean? Not everybody gets in? You better look into that, right? Uh, he told us. It's in, the, it's in scriptures, and we talked about that last week. So if you want to go, that's great. Uh, there, there is a way to go. There is a gate to get through to go. Uh, and that's all been laid out for us in scripture, and you can look at that. Um, so that, that's the very first thing we hear often. I want to go there. Uh, others say this. I, I can't wait to see the streets of gold, right? Or I can't wait to get the keys to my mansion. Anybody there? Don't raise your hand. That's all right. That's okay, and, and that speaks more of us than, than we realize if that's our very first thought. Because those two, and, and responses similar to them, focus on the material things of heaven, right? The gold, the mansions, the, the stuff of heaven, right? And, and that is what, what we have been distracted by the most here on earth, isn't it? It's the stuff. And so it, it makes sense that if we're people of the earth and, and we're used to seeing stuff and collecting stuff, we would want to start our collection in heaven as soon as possible, right? And, and we probably think about gold, we probably think about a mansion, all these things. But, but that's re really just the material stuff of heaven. And let me just say, that's, that's not the important stuff. But how many of you say, I want a new body, Right? Are you old enough to get to the point where you're like, whoo, I could use a new body. Where do I get one of those? Well, you get one in heaven. 
And the longer we live, the more our bodies are broken and wore out, the more we look forward to our heavenly bodies, right? I don't care what you thought you looked like when you were 18. It ain't a heavenly body. It doesn't matter what you think or what other people told you. It is nothing in comparison to what's waiting for you in heaven. And we'll hear a little bit more about that uh, later, in hev- or later in the sermon today. But, but that, too, is not the main focus of God in what he has pre- prepared for us in eternity. Not even close to the main focus. It is one of the things, but it's not the most important thing. What about this? And we, we, uh, we, we heard uh, the little ones say this. Uh, I want to see a loved one, right? She said, Alice. I want to see Alice, right? And that's a good thing, too. A lot of us have sent other people on to heaven, and, and we do desire to see them, right? Uh, and that's okay to think about that. It shows how much we miss them, and it shows that we long to be with that person who has passed on, and there's nothing wrong with that either. One pastor that I read about who lost his wife said this, Heaven becomes more real the more people who I know are there waiting for me. Let that sink in for just a minute. Heaven becomes more real the more people I have waiting there for me. A lot of us have uh, racked up some numbers of people waiting for us there. And it makes heaven become more real when we begin to actually send real loved ones there. What about this? I want to see Jesus. I want to worship God in person. That, that, that's a great desire to have, and, and that's one that we're going to talk about more in just a few moments. That's one we often sing about, right? It's in a lot of the songs. It's in, in a lot of uh, church history and that kind of stuff. I want to see Jesus face to face. We sing about that, but, but are you really preparing to do that? Because one day it will be a reality as well. As we continue today, uh, I don't know what you wrote down. We'll, we'll deal with that in a little bit, but... As we continue today, let me give you a working definition of heaven so you will understand what I mean when I'm referring to it because the word heaven can mean several different things. Even within scripture, it refers to a couple different things. It can be as simple as just the sky above. Uh, God created the heavens and the earth. What's that? Well, that's just the sky above, right? It could mean even the further out sky, the the outer space where he created the, 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 the moon and the stars and all that stuff. It could be even further, further out and to where we don't know and be the, the place where God lives. And then some even use the word heaven to refer to, to everything that they understand about eternity. They just ball it all up and say, all that's happening in heaven. That may or, not, may, or not, may, or not, may or may not be true if you read scripture closely, right? But sometimes we do that. We, we ball everything we know and we just say, well, that happens in, in heaven. Well, well, we'll talk about that maybe in another day. So it's beyond the scope of this sermon today to do a word study on all the uses of heaven in Scripture. But I want to narrow our focus to just one of those definitions today, and I would say it's the most important one for today. And and heaven, as I'm using the term today, and heaven as we're going to be seeing in the Scriptures that I have chosen today, is this. Heaven, most simply put, is the dwelling place of God. If you get nothing else out of this sermon... No, that heaven is the dwelling place of God. And not just any God, a, a holy God, right? Heaven is the dwelling place of the holy God. Heaven is the term that we heaven is the term used in the Bible to indicate the, the space where God and the various spiritual beings, such as angels, reside. And in Christian tradition, heaven is generally, uh, uh, generally understood as the final destination of the righteous after death. And one of the kids got that right as well, right? That's where we go after we die. Well, yes, when, if you're ready, that, that's the right answer, right? Uh, traditionally, that's what we say. That, that's where you go. That's your final destination for the righteous. And that is true as well. For today, I want to just provide you with a glimpse of what to expect in heaven based on what we are told in Scripture. And and please know, I had to choose just three to to share with you today. Due to the constraints of time and all the things that we're taking care of today, I could only choose three to to talk about. But there are many, many more things that we're we're told to expect 
to experience and see and, and, and have available to us in heaven. And, and I want to encourage you to seek that out in your own devotional time. Read about what, what Scripture truly says about heaven. Don't watch Hallmark channels. Don't read other books. Read the Scripture. See what God wants you to know about heaven. I'm just going to share three of them with you this morning. The first thing to expect in heaven is this. It is Jesus himself. That's the very first thing that you can expect in heaven is Jesus. Um, it, it, it's the desire of many believers to see Jesus face to face. Maybe you wrote that down. We have songs about that, right? In heaven, Jesus will be there in the flesh. You'll be able to see him. You'll be able to touch him. You'll be able to experience him. You'll have the opportunity to, to interact and worship him personally. But that, that's almost beyond our comprehension, right? But, but some of you watch The Chosen and you think, oh, what would it be like? Uh, or maybe another movie that represents Jesus' life, right? What would it be like to, to walk with Jesus? What would it be like to just share a meal with Jesus? To sit down and have a conversation? Guess what? In heaven... You'll be able to do that because Jesus is there and he is uh, available to us there. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. Uh, here's a few scriptures that speak of Jesus being there in heaven. And the Apostle Paul, who himself was taken up and given a glimpse into heaven, w- which you can read about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10, later tells the church in, in Philippi this. It's found in Philippians chapter uh, 3 verse 20 and 21 Paul says this but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives let that sink in we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives he's alive and well today in heaven he goes on and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which we, uh, sorry, with which he will bring everything under his control. Earlier this year on Ascension Sunday, that was May 5th, if you don't remember, we looked at several scriptures that told us and affirmed for us that, that Jesus is alive and he is actively ministering on our behalf in heaven. And for those of you who, who have studied Hebrew this, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews this year, we were told that over and over and over again in the book of Hebrews. That he is our high priest and he is serving there for us. The book of Hebrews speaks about Jesus entering heaven and uh, to appear now before God to offer his sacrifice once for all time as our great high priest. Jesus is in heaven, ministering before the Father on our behalf. Hebrews, let's look at that in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24, and then I'm going to jump to just the end of verse 26. And it says this, For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself, to appear now before God on our behalf. Jumping down to the end of verse 26, it says this. But now, once for all times, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. Jesus is in heaven, actively interceding for us before the Heavenly Father. He he is actively working on our behalf. What an amazing thing. We, we can expect, to, if you get there before the rest of us, you can expect to see him at work. He, he's not up there lounging around, right? Jesus is at work interceding on behalf of all of us who are still here on earth. What an amazing thing. Another part of what Jesus is doing in heaven is actively preparing a place for us. You heard me read that passage to the kids. I'm going to read it to you in just a minute. So he is actively interceding for us, and he is actively preparing a place for us for us. He tells the disciples this, uh, and he tells them, when everything is ready, I will come and get you, and you will always be with me where I am. We can count on seeing Jesus there. Let me read you the same thing that I read the kids just a moment ago. It's in the gospel of John chapter 14. Hear the words of Jesus to his disciples. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. 
There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. My fellow believers, we can rest assured that we will see Jesus in heaven and we will get to spend eternity with him. He promised it. He's at work even now in heaven on our behalf. You will get to see Jesus. What an amazing thing to begin to prepare our hearts for. Say, man, I'm going to go see my best friend. I want to go and be with him. There's more that the scripture tells us is waiting for us in heaven. The second thing that we can expect in heaven is, is ongoing fellowship with God. We can expect ongoing fellowship with God. The name of our church is what? Central Fellowship Church. Most of the time we think of that middle word fellowship as, as what is happening in our relationship as we join together here in this church building as, as brothers and sisters in Christ to, to worship God and, and to serve him together. But have you ever thought of the eternal implications of that word fellowship? And have you ever thought that this is just giving us a small taste, a small sample of what it might be to, to be in fellowship with the Heavenly Father who awaits us in heaven. He wants to dwell with us. He wants to be in our midst. Midst, did that come out right? Whatever, not missed, midst, in between. He wants to be with us. Jesus told us just a moment ago, he wants us to be with him where he is. Guess what? God the Father wants that just as much. He wants us to be with him. He wants to have fellowship with us. He wants to do life with us. He wants to just be with us. Here are some scriptures that speak of our fellowship. The, the, the type of relationship that we will enjoy with God in heaven for all eternity. One of the challenges about being in the church on Sunday mornings is, is, is what? You got to leave, right? Right? Some of you want to leave. If you're having a bad day, guess what? You don't want to leave. Because you realize this is where God's presence is. This is where you've felt him. And you know as soon as you go out into the world, it's not the same anymore, is it? He's still with us, but not undistracted, right? One day, we're going to be in fellowship with him forever. What an amazing thing. Here's some scriptures. Let's start with the vision that God, that God provided for us in Revelation of the new heaven and the new earth. God is there with his people and doing some very special things for them. Look at Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 through 4. And, and, and hear the word of the Lord this morning where it tells us this. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying... Look, God's home is now amongst, among, <laughs> I can't say all these words today, among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. What an amazing experience awaits us as God lives with us personally and, and, and we live in fellowship with him and he brings his will and his blessings into our lives in an uninhibited way. No more sin, no more death, nothing to get in the way. My friends, we can't even imagine what that might be like, because we've lived here our whole existence so far, right? And he has amazing things for us when we're in fellowship with him, when we're living with him, when he's just there dwelling with us. We can hardly even imagine what that might be like. The psalmist David was looking forward to this joyous time of being in the Lord's presence forever. Listen to how he expresses his joyful anticipation of being forever in God's presence. 
before I read that to you, let me ask you to check yourself. If I said in just a moment you're going to be in God's presence forever, are you excited? Are you depressed? Are you like, oh, no, oh, man, I was afraid this was going to happen one day. Or you're like, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Listen to what David says in the scriptures, Psalm, Psalm 16. just lost my, good thing I can read numbers. Psalm 16, verses, 16, verses 9 to 11 says this. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever. Is that what you think when you think, man, I'm going to be in fellowship with God forever? Does that psalm resonate with you? You're like, yeah, I can't wait until that happens. I want to be in the, the joyous presence of the Lord forever. It's on the way. We are to be preparing for that. We are to be anticipating that, just as David did in that psalm. Let's move back to the the New Testament uh, again, uh, to the book of Jude. It's the small book right before Revelation, if you have a hard time finding that. The, The book of Jude ends with a prayer of praise, anticipating uh, God bringing us into his glorious presence. Maybe you could give that a try this week and say, I'm just going to sit down in my devotion time. I'm just going to think, what would it be like just just to enter his glorious presence? Maybe I could write a prayer about that. Maybe I could write a psalm about that. Maybe I could write a poem about that. Maybe I could just say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you've prepared for me ahead. Listen to this prayer at the end of Jude that anticipates entering God's presence. Jude chapter 1, verse 24 through 25 says this. And now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. Did did you catch the part in there where God will bring us into his presence with great joy? Right? How many of you are going to welcome all your family in with great joy at Thanksgiving? Or you're going to be like, how'd you get in here? Come on in. We got an extra seat. That's not how God feels about you entering his presence for all eternity. He, he says he, he wants to, to, to bring you in with great joy. He will bring you with great joy into his presence. Not because of anything we did. Did you read the rest of the verse? It's all because of what he did. He gets the glory for it all. And we just get to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All praise and glory goes to you. Thank you for welcoming me into your presence My friends, you can't even imagine how much God has anticipated the day that you will come into his presence. We don't think about that much, do we? Well, I don't. I don't know. Maybe you do. He is anxiously anticipating, even more than than some of you want to go there, and some of us are still on the fence about whether we want to go or not, Even more than those of you who want to go there, God wants you to be into his presence. And it's going to be the most joyous day when he says, welcome home. I am so glad you're here. You're going to be here forever with me. You'll never have to leave. He has been waiting for the fellowship with us to be restored since the time that it was broken when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve's devastating choice. Think about that. He's been waiting that long for that relationship to be restored and for you to be able to become into his presence because Jesus had to come. He had to make atonement for your sin. He, he, he had to send the Holy Spirit to make us holy. He had to do a lot of things. He had to do a lot of things to get us to the point where we were able to be brought into his presence 
We've talked about that all year long. We talked about some of that last year, or last week, sorry. God has been anxiously anticipating. He has been anxiously preparing to joyless, joyously welcome you into his presence. What, what an amazing thing. I hope you're picking up on the fact that being in fellowship with God brings uh, and being in his glorious presence is something joyful to look forward to in heaven. Scripture promises us that over and over and over again. You will be in my presence forever. And I delight, delight to bring you in. I, I want to bring you near me. I have worked for this moment for your entire life. And now we get to be together. What an amazing thing God has waiting for us in heaven. There's more. The third thing to expect in heaven is the rest that God has prepared. Wow. How we long for rest. Maybe I could just speak for myself. Wow. Super wow. How I long for some rest. Our world seems to operate at an ever-increasing pace with no indication of ever slowing down the needle just keeps going faster and faster and faster god says i have rest for you this summer we did a sermon series on god's rest some of which we are we some of which we have the opportunity of experiencing now and we practiced that rest together when we were up at camp christian for our uh, annual outdoor service we practiced resting together because there is a rest that, that we can experience now but guess what? God has even more rest for us, but we must wait for heaven and eternity for that to be fully experienced in our life. So that rest is still yet in the future for us. Here's a, a few scriptures that speak of God's rest that is still waiting for us. The, the first one I want to point out to you is in 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 1, verses, 10, or verses 7 through 10. And it says this, And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus. Of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with eternal destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. That means no fellowship. That's what you don't want, is the no fellowship. And when he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people. Praise from all who believe. And this includes you, for you believed what you were told about him. There is a rest that God will provide to all of his holy people when Jesus appears from heaven. And it will become a reality that our heart and that our soul longs for. Let me just give you just, just a small thing to think about. Part of that rest is never being tempted again. Never struggling with sin and strife that's in this world. We can't even imagine the relief that that would bring us. That would bring you such mental rest you have no idea. That would give you such spiritual rest you would have no idea. We don't know what it's, not, what it's like to not have to constantly fight a spiritual battle against temptation, against the evil one, against the thoughts that want to get into our minds. We are constantly in a spiritual war. When we get there, the war will be over. Christ is the victor. And we'll be able to enter into a spiritual rest like we've never known. We should look forward to that. God has that prepared for us. That's just a small glimpse of even what it is. That's not even in the notes. But you need to know that there is a rest that God, has, that God will provide all of his holy people when Jesus appears from heaven. This rest... Uh, that he has, this is the rest that he has prepared from the very beginning uh, for his people to enjoy and enter into. It, it's part of that eternity that he said, I have prepared this for you from the beginning of time. 
this is what I wanted you to always experience, but you haven't yet. But man, I want you to. I'm going to joyously welcome you into this. The writer of the Hebrews speaks several times of the rest that God has prepared for his people. Turn with me back to the book of Hebrews in chapter 4. We're going to read the, the last couple of our scriptures for today. I want to encourage you, read uh, chapter 4 in Hebrews. It speaks really all about rest. I'm only going to read a portion of this to you today. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 speaks of this same rest that is promised to us. It says this, God's promise of, uh, of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listen to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. Then if you jump down a few verses, yeah, the writer of Hebrews continues to speak about God's rest, saying this in verses 9 through 11. So there is a special rest. In some version that, that says, uh, in some translation, it says there is a Sabbath rest, a holy rest that God has prepared. There is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. My friends, you need to know, there is a special rest that God has prepared for his people. And it is waiting for us in the presence of God in heaven, we will be able to enter into the rest that he has promised. We will be able to enter into the rest that he has prepared for us. It will feel more amazing than anything you could possibly imagine just to be at rest in his presence. What an amazing thing he has waiting for us. I look forward to that rest. a long journey we could use some rest I hope you look forward to that as well say yeah I want to just rest in his presence I just want to enjoy being with him telling him thank you and letting his blessings just flow over me like, like a loving father's heart desires to do uninhibited what an amazing thing we can anticipate, we can experience in heaven. I don't know what the first thing you thought about heaven was when, when you shared that with the person next to you at the beginning of the sermon. But I want to encourage you again to begin adjusting your view of heaven and eternity to match God's holy heaven that is presented to us in Scripture think about that for just a moment how would it change your anticipation of going to heaven if you would think about these three things with regards to what is waiting for you in heaven with our holy god what, what if instead of whatever you wrote down whatever that is you, you just said man i can't wait to see jesus i can't wait to see the one who paid the price for my sins that, that allowed me to even enter in here. And I can't wait to be in fellowship with God because he's prepared this for me. He longed for this for me and, and he's going to welcome me in. He's going to be extremely glad I'm there. I can't wait to be welcomed in to the Father's presence. And then what about the rest where he says, well done. Why don't you sit down and rest a while? You've done a good job. What an amazing peace to wash over us. What other amazing blessings he has waiting are countless. We didn't have time for those today. But these three alone should get you beginning to think of about what God thinks about when he has prepared eternity for us. Please note 
that the focus of what God has isn't on the material things found in heaven, nor is it even on the other holy people who are there. The main focus presented to us about heaven and scripture is the relational aspects with our God who longs to be with his people for eternity. Let that sink in for just a moment. We're so distracted by so many other things. But if you read the majority of the passages, yes, there's speak about bodies. Yes, there's speak about mansions or homes or whatever. But it's in the context of one thing. Relationship with a holy God. Those things flow out of the blessings of a father's heart. They're not the main thing at all. The main thing is that you're in his presence and that you have fellowship with him. That's what he's been working for since the dawn of time. That's the whole reason he sent his son to die for us. Is he desired that fellowship to be reunited once again. That's his focus in heaven. Let me challenge you. Get your focus on the relationship aspect of being with him in eternity. That's his heart for every one of us. That's what he's preparing us for, to be in a relationship with him forever. That is a humbling thing to think about because I look at myself in the mirror every day and I know all the things that I've done but what is that in Jude? We, we read that prayer of praise. We realize that it's not anything about me. It's all about what he did for me. What an amazing thing to say, wow, God, you're preparing these things for me. You're preparing me to be in a holy relationship with you. And all I have to do is be willing and believe that this is what you are doing. And this is what you want for me. My friends, that's the heaven that he has prepared for each and every one of us. He longs for us to be in fellowship, in relationship with him, with nothing hindering us. It's his greatest desire for you and for me. As I close in prayer today, would you take a moment and maybe thank God for, for all that he has prepared for you in heaven. And maybe if there's one here today or even more than one who hasn't entered into that relationship today, let, let me just encourage you, that rest is still available. The, the door is still open. Jesus is still interceding before the Father. All you have to say is, I believe in Jesus. I'm a sinner and I, I can't do anything about getting into heaven, but, but Jesus died for my sins on the cross. And I believe that he paid the way for me to get into heaven. And that he, his blood washes me clean. And he will walk me into the Father and say, look who's here. And the Father will say, yeah! I can't, I've been waiting for this. I'm so excited to see you. Let's hang out for all eternity. If you haven't made that decision, would you make it today? The Father longs for you to be in eternity with him. And he's done everything he can to make that a possibility. You just have to receive. As I close in prayer, would you respond from your heart to the Lord today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the awesome God that you are. And your awesomeness is just barely displayed in all that you've created for us to experience in heaven. It still only scratches the surface of your majesty and your glory. It only, it only begins to scratch the surface of what we can barely comprehend now of what it might be like to see Jesus face to face, to enter into fellowship with you in person, and to experience the rest that you have had planned for us since the beginning of time. Father, we can, we can barely even get our minds around parts of that. But Father, we just say thank you. Thank you that that is your great desire for each and every one of us, that we would be welcomed into your presence, 
and be able to spend eternity with you forever. Father, thank you that, that you made a way for that to be possible, not because of who we are, not because of our last name, not because of anything or how hard we've worked. It's all because of your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for our sins. And Lord, help those who are here today who maybe haven't believed, Lord, to place their trust in you, that Jesus sacrifice is sufficient to cover their sins all of them and lord that it would that, that, that he is the gate that, that leads us into eternity with you heavenly father i pray that you would move in those hearts today that need to believe lord that you would re hear their prayer and, and lord that you would uh, you would uh, administer your forgiveness and your grace and lord that you'd begin to let them catch the vision of what you have prepared for them in eternity as well, that you would joyously welcome them into heaven. Thank you, Lord, that that, that that is your great desire, and that's what you have worked at for each and every one of us. Father, we are humbled today that you've done that for us and that it is already reality. Father, we want to say thank you for all those that you've already taken on into heaven that we have known. And Lord, though it makes heaven a sweeter place, we're just thankful that they get to experience fellowship with you for all eternity. And we look forward to the day when you call us home as well. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you're going to do and help us live with your view of eternity in mind. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as I give you the benediction this morning? I want to invite you back again next week. Because we have more eternity to talk about. And I don't want you to miss out on, on any of those things that God has for you. So let me invite you back again next week to hear more about God's holy eternity. He, he wants you to know about it. And I want you to know about it too. Would you go in the love of the Father who made a place for you in heaven? Would you go in the forgiveness of Jesus Christ? Because it's only through him that, that, that we have the ability to enter in. Would you go in the power of the Holy Spirit and live the holy life that God has, has for you until he calls you home to his holy heaven? You are blessed. You are dismissed.